To support this show, go to patreon.com forward slash 5G4D. From the kitchen of the cabin, it's the five games for Doomsday Review. Dragon Castle. Aren't nice surprises nice, though? Much nicer than those not nice surprises. You know, like a sudden rainstorm or a parking ticket or the sudden realisation when you reach middle age that even though this life was thrust upon you without your consent by the limbic urges of your parents, you will have to bear the dread and pain of the cessation of life alone and terrified. You know... Those not nice surprises. I much prefer the nice ones. Those rare moments where expectation is not just met but exceeded. When you feel like you've been pleasantly thwacked across the mush by a velvet football sock containing licorice all sorts and a packet of victory V's. That last sentence was for my American listeners. Before I review the game I'm here to review, I want to give you a little tour of my brain. Now, this is hardly a prepossessing destination, and I'll spare you the sticky and sordid little alleyways around the amygdala and the falsely crenellated squares that dot the temporal lobe and lead you to my cerebellum, the centre of logic in my brain. I'll walk you by the run-down little hovels and the dirty little brain cells that idly hang around on street corners, listless, because they've got nothing to do. Oh, what a miserable place this is, and what a proof that without direction and purpose, a place will quickly fall to ruin. Compare this to the parts of my brain that deal with self-importance, lack of self-esteem and cognitive dissonance. These are grand flagellum-lined boulevards showing all the benefits of a surfeit of synaptic activity. The disparity between the two areas is truly dispiriting. This is why my gaming tastes confuse me so much. I quickly shot through the fleshy pleasures that Ameritrash had to offer and landed gently in the world of farming simulations and inexplicably themed colonisation games. Games that belied my chaotic personality. I suppose they bring a mental repose, a gentle focus that unburdened me for a couple of hours of being that thing I project on the world. Though there was one arena I avoided, the abstract, Games in which all narrative pretense is stripped away and skill is dragged to the fore. I can bypass my idiocy and imagine I'm a medieval farmer or a louche Victorian aristocrat, but I find it impossible to identify with that thing that a pawn is supposed to be. Then there's the skill thing. I'm skilled uh, in bullshit, I'm skilled in sudden bursts of petulance, but the clinical skill of the cold, logical, abstract game is a skill I don't possess. I've tried a few abstracts, but I've never enjoyed them. Until now. Dragon Castle is a game built around mahjong tiles. These tiles are arranged into a predetermined pile called a castle, and then players on their turns pull tiles and construct little castles of their own on their player boards. There are rules concerning which tiles can be pulled, and how they can be arranged, and in which ways to score points. Tiles are placed face up on players' personal displays, and if four or more tiles of the same colour find themselves adjacent to one another, they automatically flipped, yield points, and in later rounds can be built upon. Points are awarded for the amount of tiles flipped. More flipped tiles giving more points, so clever placement on your mat is paramount. Roofs can be bought in lieu of drawing tiles, and when judiciously placed, can yield even more points. There is a deck of special powers. One power is drawn at the beginning of the game to be used by all players, and this adds another interesting layer to the puzzle of the game. I was fascinated by Dragon Castle when I saw it displayed in row after Bakelite row at Essen. Horrible Games has made it their MO to produce games that are fully rounded experiences, where the look and tactility of the game is as much a factor as the strategy. The tiles in Dragon Castle are a joy to hold and clink together. It feels perfectly natural, if not a little naughty, to gently caress the moulded indentations. Dragon Castle reminds players gaming is not just confined to the sterile intellect, but a visceral, bodily pursuit. Saying that, though, 
This game is not just about stacking blocks on top of each other or clinking the pretty pieces. There is a real game here too. It is a game whose strategies careen around the heads of the players, how to build, where to lay, but sometimes spills out and sloshes around the table in waves of interaction. There is the obvious pitfall of having your opponents whip those vital pieces from under your nose, but also you have to weigh up the perils of taking a piece that might open up the board for the person sitting next to you. It is this fabulous interplay between the cerebral and the tactile that makes Dragon Castle so rewarding. Building your own little castle is enjoyable enough, but the robust scoring system and the paired away elegance of the rules reinforces the all around excellence of this game. I've never enjoyed an abstract game as much as this one, and it plays as well with four as it does with two. I can take or leave the not nice surprises, but the nice ones have a lot to recommend them, and Dragon Castle is one of the nicest surprises I've had in a long time. To support this podcast, go to patreon.com forward slash 5G for D. Thank you very much.